What's up everybody? Shark Eyes here with my first action figure review for the channel. Today I have chosen the classified series David L. Bazooka Katzenbogen, uh, iconic character from the Joe line who appeared in the, both the comics and cartoon and uh, has quite the following as a result of his exploits in the cartoon. This is a figure I never had as a child, so I was a little on the fence about purchasing him. There was no real nostalgia attachment, but I was attracted by the box art and you know having the figure in the collection uh, to go alongside all the classic characters that have already been released. So I picked him up from Robot Kingdom. So without further ado, let's get into having a look at the box. So obviously you've got the art here in the frame. It's pretty uh, dynamic. It was actually illustrated by an artist named Anyan Anut. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he's a free, freelance concept artist based out of Berlin. And he's also the owner of video game studio, Studio Fizzman. I don't recall seeing his art on any of the other classified series boxes, but I could be wrong. Uh, in terms of his inspiration for this, well, I decided to reach out to him on Twitter because I like to find out a little bit more of the behind the scenes stuff that we don't necessarily always get from Hasbro um, in way of media. So I asked him what was his inspiration behind the creation of that, of that work. And he said, I found inspiration between a muscle bound, brightly colored football player with a huge loud weapon entering camouflage in the jungle, in jungle warfare specifically. Bright, loud, and colorful, exploding in the jungle. So look, it's pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, and it is, you know, an uh, apt description. So that's it for the art side of things. We've got another look at it on the spine of the box. Uh, Bazooka is obviously number 62 in the line. And if we're going to look at his specialized skill sets, we have a level three in ordnance a level four in launcher, a level one in explosives, and a level three in anti-armor. So obviously launcher is his uh, primary specialty. Um, and considering his name is Bazooka, that makes a whole lot of sense now, doesn't it? And so I look at the back of the box, you get the idea of the gear he comes with, whole lot of legal mama jumbo, blah, blah, blah. This one actually has a international uh, Asian uh, translation on this sticker. I can't read Mandarin or Cantonese, so good luck with that one. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So why don't we crack him open? Easiest way to open these so you don't damage the box art if you're inclined to keep it. In this case, I probably will. You just go in from the bottom and then we can just go, hey, there he is. And there's the other part. Let's put this to the side. So you've got the standard figure box or foot locker, whatever you want to call it, number 62. And these obviously don't really change much across the line. He's got his name on it. David L. Bazooka Katzenbogen. So I'll just pop that there for a minute. And there is the figure. Let me cast a bit more light on him there. We'll just zoom in and have a look at his face. So yeah, pretty good, accurate face sculpt. These legs are have been a little bit of bone of contention with collectors, so it'd be interesting to see how these ones are. And there's nothing on the back, just the ties. So we'll uh, free him from his cardboard sleeping chamber and have a better look at him. So there you can see he's standing upright quite easily. I didn't have to manipulate him too much. He has the drop down hips going on. There's a, another example of him standing. We'll just put him in the standard T pose. Yep, so they can let's see how much he can flex. He's not too stiff, which is pretty good. 
And you've got the joint here. It seems to be, it doesn't seem to have a lot of movement in that torso. Yeah, you can hear it a little bit, it is there. Left, right, not much downward motion in the neck. There's a little bit. You got that there. Yep. Get this leg up there. Ooh, that one's a bit. That one's a bit. Ooh, that's dicey. Let's see if I can get that. Oh, that was a bit of a crunch. Sitting down. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see. Looks like he's just slid in the floor like in a 80s movie, like dance scene or something. I don't think he's gonna stay in that position. Nope, he's not. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, look, he's not as gummy as what I heard that the Tiger Force version was. I'm not a massive fan of those boots, and I can see why other people aren't as well. But yeah, he's, he stands pretty well. Unassisted posing is pretty good. Right, let's get these accessories out. Got the standard Hasbro little Joe Cobra D bag. Alright, first item the backpack, which is very reminiscent of his original one in terms of being able to hold rockets. Here's a bit of detail on here. Let's have a look close in the camera there. And a bit more there. There's nothing special. That's just the spot for the rockets. Obviously the spot for the bazooka and the back peg. This detail here is nice though. So there's that. One rocket. Pretty run of the mill. I'm sure it's very similar to the uh, ones that came with the Tiger Voss version. Let's get a better look at that there. There we go. And rinse, repeat. With this one. This is the cool one though. I like this one. This is the one with the teeth on it. And spin it around, it's on the other side as well. Let's go this way. Yeah, it's a nice touch. And then you've got the yellow peril tip. Just for a little point of difference. I'm assuming it's supposed to be a different type of ordinance. Um, that would be my guess. I'm not having got clarification on that from anywhere I've seen. Someone can maybe correct me in the comments though. There is his old school helmet. Very reminiscent of, you know, what the NFL players used to wear a long time ago. And also, you know, with the combat aesthetic to it. It's a nice little piece, actually. Detailing on it is it's quite nice. Got that like textured look to the helmet and the strap. Obviously, this doesn't connect. It's just there for good looks. And of course, bazooka wouldn't be complete without his bazooka. Now, the big question is: Is it straight? Uh, there's a bit of a bend in it, ever so slightly. Ah, uh, Hasbro <laughs> strikes again. Oh, that's not great. I had heard that that comes loose pretty easily, so obviously that's where you lo uh, load the rockets. Uh, that piece, as I just said, see how that just come off? It doesn't really pivot cleanly, which is 
pretty average, to be honest. Like, that shouldn't happen, you know what I mean? But it's going to be letting that fixed position for the most part anyway. So, yeah, no big deal. All right, let's kit him up. So, I'll pop this backpack in, which is, of course, one of those mysteries of the Joe line, how a person wearing a football jersey and has no straps for the backpack can have it existing on himself. But hey, it's Joe line, it's a fantasy line, make believe, all right? If not, there is fixes to that. I've seen a couple of um, cool hacks uh, one of them I wanted to do myself, but I haven't been able to secure the item for that. And that is, uh, you can get some webbing from a Marvel Legends uh, Weapon X figure. And it fits perfectly over him. I don't, I'm not sure who did that, but I saw it in one of the Facebook groups. But that is my aim. But finding that piece has not proven easy. So anyway, for now, he's going to have a floating backpack. So the rocket's just sort of sitting there flush, you know. I worry that, you know, these coming in and out, probably that paint's going to wear thin over time. So just be mindful of that, I suppose. I'll just sit that in there like so. That one can go in there like so. And we'll grab our bazooka. And I'm assuming this just clips on like that, which is, I'm guessing that's the case. It's a, I guess you could hang it, you could hang it like that as well, but that's a bit impractical. Again, sorry for the sniffling guys. It's freezing cold here in Melbourne today and I've been out walking, walking dogs most of the morning. So it's a bit, a bit chilly. Yeah, I'm guessing that just folds over like that. Okay, so that just sits there like that, which does look pretty cool. Um, he doesn't come with any sidearms, which is a bit naff, you know, because after you fire those four rockets off, what are you going to do then? Hurt people with harsh language? So yeah, that's him there. Let's let's do a comparison of him to another figure, which was the one from the 25th line, which I do have. Now, you can see that there is some difference. Obviously, he's got the number 14 on. So they stay true to that in the uh, New England Patriots jersey. Then you've got difference in the in the paint apps of the legs. And also, there's actually a bit of difference between uh, the paint apps of the, the color of the red of the jerseys. They're modern figure, so to speak. Modern. Uh, came with that old school looking um, rifle like they had in the cartoons. So that was a nice touch. So you could obviously kit, kit him out with one of the ones that are coming. I think it's with Grunt, <coughs> excuse me. And voila, Hasbro really needs to release those in an accessory set though, that's, but that's another story. So let's have a look at it from the back end. So his bazooka is obviously black as opposed to this version where it's the olive drap and the color of the rockets are different and obviously sit in a different way. Now, I don't think these go in that way, but let's have a look. You might be able to do it. Nah, they don't go in like that. They're definitely meant to go in in a downward position. So yeah, there's a slight difference there. Different colors of the boots as well and the helmets. I think I might've already mentioned that, but if not. So this is obviously a figure that I never really, again, wanted, but in terms of a completion standpoint, that's why I got it. So let's just skip him over here to the side, buy a mini bazooka. So yeah, that's him. That's pretty much it. Like, I think he would be served well with a long arm. And I did see one of my fellow collectors, Tony Romo, did kit his one out with something. We're always discussing kitting him out with something. There's some sort of like M16 I think would be a good look. I don't really have one handy that I can use. I could pop this one in him. I'll just grab this grid arm one and see how it looks. It's 
Probably a bit of overkill, but. Oh yeah, that actually looks good. Hang on, let's get that in there a bit better. His hands are really easy to actually manipulate, which is fantastic. Let's pose that a little bit better. Now he doesn't want to stand, he's got those jelly legs. Yeah, that looks tough. Yeah, M16 is definitely a good look. Let's just have that scope out a bit there. There we go. But yeah, obviously you could change that up with any any kind of long arm. But I like that. That's a good look. The scope's probably a bit too much. Okay, so I posed him in this position just to see how easy it would be to get him into like a rocket loading sort of position and it was a little tricky because those legs weren't being too kind so yeah he's probably could probably could do with a little heating up in some in some warm water to be honest but yeah he can hold the hold the rockets perfectly um, this thing keeps coming off though again which is quite annoying so I don't know if I've just got a bodgy one or they're all pretty much like that. If you've had issues with it and you've been able to rectify it, please let me know. I'd like a little fix for that, I think, because it's just going to be infuriating to, to pose unless it's unless it's shut. Like it doesn't even kind of doesn't even clip on properly. Like if you can see that there, it just sort of sits in position, which is pretty average. And there it goes again. <laughs> Exhibit B. Oh, man. Hasbro quality control in its beauty, beauty and splendor. I'm not going to try and even put him into a rocket holding position because I'm that will take all day. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm a bit restricted for time at the moment. But as you can see, we can get that bazooka up there. And hold it in the air. And you've probably also seen already by now because there's already a fair few reviews out and toy photography images of him that you can attach the blast effects that come with um, vehicles like the Hiss and, or when we get that, or that come with like Scrap Iron and his drone. So um, they will probably likely be top heavy as I've also seen and you'll end up with him going boop like that. But with a bit of playing around, you can definitely get it done so all in all uh, bazooka is a good figure uh, is he a must-have for your collection well I guess that depends on your view of the character and how you collect uh, I think he'll go great with uh, the other Joes that I do have you definitely need an ordnance specialist and he is probably the first heavy hitter we've gotten in that department for the Joe team uh, I just want to do one last thing before I wrap up. I just want to compare him in terms of size to one of the bigger boys like Gung Ho. Let's see how easy he stands up. Come on, let's just go there, buddy. Come on. Oh, he doesn't want to cooperate either. Having one of those days, are you, mate? All right. There we go. So, yeah, he's... Not as big as Gung Ho. I guess if we take that cap off, that might change things though. Let's have a look. Back to back. Might be, even be easier. Yeah, he's probably a fraction, a fraction smaller, but not, not a great deal. But yeah, he's definitely a big burly brute like his marine buddy there. And he'll look even better once you have Alpine in your collection with him, which we still are yet to see, but he's no doubt coming. I know a lot of people want him, as you see online, a lot of people complaining, where's Alpine, where's Alpine? He hasn't been made yet. So yeah, if I had to give him a rating, um, which in my previous videos I've given star ratings, but I'm switching that up because this is my channel and I'm allowed to do that. And so from now on, we're doing a shark rating. So I will give him three and a half sharks out of five. He's going to lose a point for this, the falling off. The lack of a sidearm, 
it's a minor gripe, but I'm going to throw that in there. And that's enough, I think, for me to downgrade him. And the legs as well. Like, you know, it should be easier to get some of these figures into poses than it is. But um, unfortunately, it's not always the case. So thank you again for watching my first action figure review. There will be plenty more to come. I've got a few things in the pipeline. It's just a matter of time. Uh, in the meantime, you can go back and watch my other videos. I know there's only a couple, but I'm slowly getting there. And while you're here, if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you don't want to subscribe, that's cool as well. But throw me a like. Why not on the way out? So thanks again. Have a great day and enjoy your collecting, folks.